Mohammed Abraham, who is here to talk about Mohammed Brahim. Here we go. Hey, Katrina, how are you? I, we got you, we got you. Um, yeah. we got a bit of background noise. I don't know if you can... Yeah, I can try. It's a bit in a Starbucks. Oh, I'm traveling, okay. it's interesting, so you have to do with it. Uh, okay, okay, don't worry about it. Um, we've got it. you, but the most important thing. And Mohammed is here to talk about the importance of diversity and inclusion when building teams, which is a very vital component. And Mohammed is also at Profile Pensions and is building a market leading investment advice platform for the UK mass market. And have you've worked in senior engineering roles spanning many, many areas of financial services and building teams. So, Mohammed, welcome and thank you for being here today. Thanks a lot for having me today. It's, uh, it's really exciting. We've seen a, quite a lot of really interesting talks. Um, and um, I wanted to use this opportunity to thank you for having me and also to talk about, um, you know, a topic that I'm sure everybody is aware of, heard of, is the, is the importance of diversity. And throughout my experience, it's been a, a recurring team. So without further ado, we're going to go through a very short presentation. It's really, it's not rocket science. It's really about reiterating the important, why it's important to build diversity and also what it means to build for diversity, equity and inclusion. So if we can go to the next the slides, great. Um, so what does the, the first question that I have that I always ask is such a broad subject. So what does it diversity and inclusion look like? It looks like for me. So it might look like this um, for some people. Um, for other people, it might look like this. So everybody has their own view of the world, and it's really about it gets confused with um, uh, the notion of tribe or the notion of reference to the same culture, uh, or it might look completely different. If you look at the next slide, uh, it's everybody has their own uh, kind of view of what the diversity is. The idea of this talk is really to set some frame of reference so that we can put some parameters around what it means. And that hopefully will help everybody get a, a, a good uh, good view. So if we look to the next slide, um, if we had to put a simple definition uh, around diversity inclusion, it's really for me, and I've tried to, to kind of summarize it in one long sentence that is self-encompassing, um, to imagine a workplace, a workforce where everyone, diverse groups of people, um, and most importantly, including people who typically experience discrimination, discrimination in their lives, um, or are, have been underrepresented, are actively hired, uh, treated equi equitably. We talk about what equity, uh, equity means. Um, and feel uh, as they are included and part of a common goal uh, from hiring to career progression. So it's rather long, but it's more than just picturing what belonging to a tribe um, is mentally. So it's really about um, representative groups of people uh, bringing different dynamics. If we move to the next slide, um, then you, you might say, why care? So, uh, well, what if I told you that diversity is good for business? Um, and all the studies have shown, um, if we look at the, the next slide, that um, um, we have now comprehensive data and comprehensive research has been undertaken over the year that says that uh, it's good for innovation, it's good for financial targets. So this is an example of a Gardner study from, from 2019. And all the most recent studies correlate that 75% of organizations um, where their decision making and their frontline team um, are diverse and inclusive will exceed their financial target. So it's not a point that needs to be proven, it's a given, it's a fact of the world we operate in. So, in the, in the spirit of you know, the, the, the need to perform better, which is the whole spirit of DevOps, uh, I think diversity and inclusion is really important. So if we move to the next slide, um, I want you to drill down a little bit into diversity inclusion in DevOps, what it means more specifically around um, DevOps. So next slide. And what's interesting is, despite talking about inclusion as really being important, you know, sort of being, uh, bringing a lot of financial performance to organizations, 
uh, if we look at the state of DevOps uh, when it comes to diversity inclusion today, um, it's still um, still some work needs to be done. And this this is, this is data from Google Cloud DevOps research and assessment data, latest report. You can find it online, and it has like a very comprehensive breakdown of um, the distribution in terms of the state of um, specifically around DevOps. So it's still male dominated. What's interesting as well, and that's another angle of diversity. Um, six, more than 60% have more than 10 years experience. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's kind of a, still a private, you know, private club, kind of. 12% um, under, only 20% of the workforce um, um, covers under represented group. So there's still a bit of work to do. So it's just a, just the opportunity of this stuff to make like a, another call to action and think about it. Um, to move to the next slide, um, and if we relate it to kind of what we hear today and all these interesting talks we've had and the awards, it's really if we look at the, the DevOps categories, and I try to relate to the DevOps categories here, which is about transformation, exemplary leadership, business impact, and DevOps community, and as you know, part of the dream for the awards, you can see how diversity inclusion spans across all those uh, diversity, uh, all those uh, categories. You know, you can you can imagine how you can have an impact uh, through a transformation initiative, through the talent or the culture you're trying to build, and how using the diversity inclusion as a lever can make for outstanding transformation initiatives. If we talk about leadership, it's obviously about how you lead, how you coach, how you influence teams. Uh, same for business impact and the community building. It's so important. How do you build a Diverse, inclusive community. If we move to the next one, um, really the takeaway here: uh, achieving diversity inclusion is key to developing high-performing team. We looked at the data. There's still some work to do. There's just a call to action. So now, if we move to the next slide, is how do we move from here? How we can improve the situation? So, um, and I'm going to just share some of the wisdom. Of of, uh, you know, acquired over the years uh, around how we can effectively build systems and frameworks and, and, and including a truly diverse focus. Go to the next slide. It's really simple. You have two angles. You have to mandate diversity and cultivate inclusion. So if there's one takeaway, it's really di uh, mandate diversity. I define diversity as a vision and make it kind of enshrined in law. We have to achieve those targets and cultivate inclusion. Inclusion is more around the day-to-day. -day. So we need you need those to be uh, set around measurable and time-bound targets, time-bound targets to, to truly achieve and lock the potential of diversity and inclusion. So cultivate inclusion and equity on a day-to-day -day basis and define a diversity vision. So if we move to the next slide, we can see and I like to use memes because it's just pictures tell more than words. Um, it's just an example of what diversity is not a numbers game. So some companies have used it like at the basic level, the first step was about building numbers and you know, having a diversity officer, having um, just numbers is more than that. It's just not, it has to be really a thoughtful exercise. So that's the first thing for beware of uh, management by just numbers. If we move to the next slide, it's really more than looking at roles and numbers, it's mandating diversity through um, carefully looking at the, 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 the fabric of your team. Does your team reflect the, the makeup of the customer base? Um, what is the current state in your respective companies? How is leadership doing diversity? Um, do you need to hire expert help? So. Um, how do you look at diversity from a gender, ethnicity, education, disability, and hiring and when promoting people? So it's when we talk about mandating diversity, it needs some careful thinking and, 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 um, and a vision, which is more than just the numbers game. Um, if we move to the next slide, it's um, one of the other pitfalls is just uh, you know diversity without inclusion. So you might think of teams that might look like diverse, but they're not inclusive. Okay, so if we move, move to the next step, um, we said you need to mandate diversity, but you also need to cultivate inclusion. So, 
an inclusion takes more than just being nice. So now I'm going to drill down to what, in a, in a nutshell, what inclusion means. If we move to the next slide. Um, inclusion means cultivate, promoting through some things and fighting others. And it's helpful because the only thing you need to fight in inclusion, inclusion is um, exhibits or um, visions of um, exhibits or examples of exclusion. So it's really simple. Um, you go hard on promoting equity, emotional IQ, community, equal speak time and coaching. So that's kind of the things you would promote. But the only thing you need to fight is exclusion. Um, why is it important? And um, it's because, um, you know, equity especially is the number one. If we move to the next slide, equity is, uh, is really an important aspect where studies and research have shown that we are hardwired to uh, negatively react to lack of equity. So as human beings, we're naturally programmed for equity rather than diversity. So we're quite happy. Uh, the, the first thing we worry about when we bring some people from different backgrounds and different is to, is to risk of not be treating fairly and uh, equitably anymore. And there are studies, and I've quoted uh, here some research from, um, from Paloma Medina, which is a uh, you know, a psychiatric and researcher around the, the mental effect of equity, we know for a fact that uh, the lack of equity, and equity being your corny, can lead to really bad stress states, inflammation, or lower life expectation. So equity is really important. We'll move to the next slide. Um, equity is like uh, always confused with equality. I get that a lot. There's a big difference between treating people equally treating with them uh, yeah, equitably. So it equally means giving the same tool to everybody and expect them to achieve, uh, to be on the same footing. Uh, e equity is more adapting and uh, getting everyone the support they need. Slightly different, but very, keep that in mind. So we move, move to the next slide. Um, including team, in, like inclusive team to from better because they develop high team, um, higher team emotional IQ, uh, they fight silos of communities, they allow a measure equal speak time, and they continue to nurture inclusion, we'll talk about the inclusion through coaching. And, and, and inclusion through coaching is really important aspect to it that is overlooked um, because uh, most of us believe that everybody is a natural in terms of including others. They take some, some coaching to kind of fight bias and fight uh, microaggressions. So it's really important to nurture inclusion through coaching and give, um, give that a go. In terms of the next slide, to fight, as I said, there's a lot of things we can promote to drive inclusion. The, the, the only thing that I would single out as the thing you need to fight is exclusion. So what does it mean? Uh, symptoms of inclusion is people who are detached from the coast, not pulling their weight or contributing less. And I don't know if you realize, but a lot of these have been factors we've traditionally used to assess individual performance. It's a bit sad, but if we look at it from an inclusion angle, for me, I take them as signs of exclusion in the first place before they become, before they are treated as signs of bad performance. So if somebody is detached from the coast, the coast, somebody is not pulling their weight, somebody is not contributing enough, Maybe they feel excluded or not belonging anymore. And maybe that's the first step, uh, the first call to action is to try to resolve that. And only after we've tried that, it might be a skill or performance issue. Um, and I, I will just finish with two things. The next slide is really kind of condensing other tips on how to reverse the trends. So that's what we talked about informing, enforcing micro affirmations. They're really good to make sure people feel included, or eye contact, moment, give credit often. Uh, treating every mistake as systemic and not individual is really important. <clears throat> Actively admit ignorance. Um, and one of the most overlooked one is correcting microaggressions with kindness. So microaggressions are, uh, you know, the things you, you, you hear and uh, you, know, you don't control and you're not aware that you're saying those things, but they are when you face those microaggressions, there are little paper cuts uh, that you get every day. And after a while, it's just, uh, they become overwhelming. It's things like um, 
bias or remarks linked to sex, um, gender, religion. We don't feel like, oh, where are you from really? For example, I get that a lot. Where are you from really? This is a microaggression. So fighting microaggression with kindness is really important. And that's one of the most overlooked aspects that um, you know, when you want to fight exclusion, fight microaggression. And to finish with, just uh, um, to, with the last slide, it's what we what is really important and what is working is to establish OKR. OKRs are objectively resolved, you're aware of them, it's measurable, uh, defined and time bound objectives. And uh, yeah, why don't you go ahead and you know in your various organization try to influence uh, people and initiate to set defined OKRs around inclusion, diversity, things like in increased, uh, just a bunch of examples here, uh, increased racial and gender equity in DevOps, hiring process in the next three years, sounds like a good one. Um, increased racial and gender representation on DevOps management team by 50% in the next two years. And why not maybe, that's for um, this fantastic DASA DevOps Award Summit, maybe for the next one, we can set an OKR to launch a DevOps diversity and inclusion awards in, in 2023. That would be fantastic. So hopefully that is a very you know good reminder, a simple um, set of guidelines and, um, and a simple presentation to talk about how important it is to build inclusion and diversity in team, but also there are ways you can go about it that doesn't make it look like a big challenge, but more as a natural um, progression. So thanks for your time and thanks for listening.